I'm doing an extra video for today because, well, I'm trying to see what's going on with this whole morning-afternoon scheduling thing, but I got a question that's good enough to have its own video and definitely needs a longer answer than the shorts can handle, so I'm going to read it. Sam Parker 2430 asks, Hey Scott, assuming you would generally say that Leon is a pretty safe city, even relative to the U.S., I was going to say United States, to the United States, given that you're raising your kids there. Definitely true. I was wondering if there were any places or areas in Leon that you would recommend tourists stay away from right now. One place I've heard of is Sutiava Barrio. Barrio Sutiava is how you'd say in Spanish. Would you agree? So, great question, and of course that's really important. So, first of all, let's just start with the first piece. Do I consider Leon very safe? I do. Leon is incredibly safe as the city goes, um, to the point where the city worries about tourists getting drunk and wandering the streets obviously plastered in the middle of the night, that's just asking for trouble in any city. We're a city of 300,000 people. It, there's going to be people who will, you know, pick your pocket, if nothing else, should you get drunk and wander the streets in the middle of the night. Like, common sense still needs to apply. It's unfortunate that you can't get drunk and wander through the streets completely delirious in the middle of the night when no one's watching over you, but the real world says you just can't no matter where you are. I wouldn't even do it in Zurich. So I, I might do it in Zurich, but <laughs> you, um, you, Leon is, especially compared to the United States, very safe. Now, right now, caveats apply. Nicaragua was safer than the U.S. for the last two years. This past year, the U.S. got safer. Nicaragua got slightly more dangerous. So right now, we're roughly tied with the U.S. just slightly ahead, and we're going to come back and, and get that title back. But uh, El Salvador has pulled into the safest place spot. Canada's in number two. Now the U.S. is at number three and Nicaragua was at number four just last year or two years ago. Nicaragua was at number one. Canada was at number two. U.S. was at number three and so forth. So things have shuffled around and El Salvador was not number four. So that they've had the big shift there. But everybody shifts around year to year. And, and when you're talking about places like Nicaragua, it's important to cast some context. If there was a single event where there was one person who went out and committed a fair number of crimes, say they mugged and violently assaulted 10 or 20 people, that would be really hard to do for a single person without getting caught, but it can happen. Or if you were to have a single mass shooting in Nicaragua, which we've never had, but would it happen, if it were to happen, that one event would be such a dramatic percentage of the population changing that it would actually skew those numbers on a national scale. Whereas in the United States, uh, it, it's hard to have those numbers skew very quickly. That doesn't mean that it's easier or harder for it to be safe or dangerous in the U.S. versus uh, Nicaragua as a, as a whole. It means that year to year and moment to moment, what you get is the United States has a much softer curve of change. It's hard for the U.S. to go from really safe to really dangerous quickly or vice versa. But this year they did do an amazing job of, of getting a lot safer quite quickly. So sometimes it does happen. But in general, you have a very soft curve to the to the the graph whereas in Nicaragua single events can cause spikes really quickly so you get a much spikier graph but when you even it out over longer periods of time they start to look uh, more even and then you can compare over a bit anyway that's just how that works mathematically given the sizes uh, so yes uh, within the Nicaraguan context though Leon is a very safe city we're we're very uh, safe compared to uh, Managua a Granada San Juan del Sur or even a Matagalpa Matagalpa actually has a little bit of a rough reputation at times uh, Leon essentially has no areas that are actually dangerous there are places you could go that are Foolish to go in the middle of the night, as always, because why are you there? Uh, but there are few and far between, and there is literally no part of the city that I would actually personally have a problem going to. But keep in mind, I'm a big guy. I speak Spanish. I'm very familiar with what the, the cultural context is in Nicaragua. So I can sense danger in a more tactical scenario than uh, someone who doesn't speak Spanish, isn't used to Nicaragua. Like I'll know what, oh, that's not what a normal group of people hanging out on the street looks like. That's something fishy. Those people are actually watching me. I have been in scenarios in Nicaragua, nowhere near Leon, where I was with Nicaraguans and we were like, oh, we should get in a car right now and leave. Um, and we did and everything was fine. But there was clearly something fishy happening, right? In the middle of the night, on a dark alley, very foolish situation, and probably they were just looking for our wallets. Were we going to get, you know, shivved in the middle? No, not very likely, but it, it was potentially an uncomfortable situation, if nothing else. It'll happen, right? So, so I'm a little bit braver, and should be a little bit braver, than a tourist or someone new coming to Nicaragua uh, and going places. So should you go to outlying barrios in general uh, in the middle of the night, um, you know, middle of the day, absolutely everywhere is on limits, right? 
as long as the sun is out, you are pretty much so safe in all of Leon that I would be really hard pressed to come up with a place that you shouldn't go. Um, there is a lot of places of why would you go? I'm a barrio walker. I want to show you the entire city and every possible thing. But for most people under normal circumstances, it's like, why would you end up there? But you asked specifically about the barrio Sutiava. So Sutiava is important for a few reasons. One, it's quite large. Uh, two, it is uh, generally considered the poorest barrio uh, in, in the city. Um, it is the indigenous barrio, uh, and it is essentially unavoidable for a lot of people. And the reason for that is that when you're leaving Leon to the west, there's one road that leaves Leon westbound. And in the city, that is Ruben Dario. Outside the city, it is the Ponaloya Road. It is the road that runs from the cathedral on the eastern terminus, well, the park as it goes to the, to the cathedral, and then it runs all the way west to the beaches of Ponaloya and Las Pinitas. Uh, so for anyone who's going to or from the beaches, you have to take that road. And that road spends half of its time uh, in the inner barrios. Uh, there's a tiny bit of it that's in El Centro, maybe one to two blocks. Uh, and then the rest of it is going through the, it is the divide between Labo Rio in the south and Zaragoza in the north. Uh, and when it gets to the end of those two barrios, it runs into Sutiava and it cuts through the middle of Sutiava. So North Sutiava is as you're leaving to the west on the right and South Sutiava is on the left. And you can tell when you've hit this barrier because it is a semaphore or a stoplight. Uh, so if you're coming down Ruben Dario, there is one stoplight. That is where the inner barrios end and the outer barrio of, of Sutiava begins. Now, should you be worried about Sutiava? Well, that's where I am. I live in Sutiava. Um, and one of the reasons we pick it is because it's very safe. Um, it is, uh, it's a large barrio. It's very affordable. Um, you, you can't avoid it. It's in a very handy location. Uh, and I, I don't just raise my kids in Leon. I raise my kids in Sutiava. <laughs> so, um, is it a real barrio? Yes, it is. It is a very poor barrio. Uh, there are areas that are very good and there's areas that are less good. Um, I know of no part of Sutiava that I would actually be worried about being at in the middle of the night. Um, it is uh, definitely safer than, say, Guadalupe or uh, probably safer than, like, Democracia, um, probably uh, safer than Primero de Mayo. Um, I would put it on the safer side of the barrios. It is not as safe as La Barrio. It is not as safe as Saragossa. Um, however, all the ones that are really close to the center, which those are, um, have a little bit of extra danger simply because there are tourists there and tourists represent opportunity. And so some people do kind of look to prey on tourists. Not many. I don't really know about that happening much, but that is where that's more likely to happen. When you get out to a Sutiava or some of those places, you're out in the middle of the night. Sure, it may be a scary area, but there's also no one looking for tourists because you're the only one. You're a special case. They don't know what's going on with you. Um, I know a lot of people who are uh, more affluent or uh, actually, many of the most affluent people in the city live in uh, Sutiava because it's it's um, it's a very respected area. Um, it, so, no, Sutiava is not something to be avoided by any stretch. There's great hotels out here. Not many, but the ones that are out here tend to be fancy. Um, the Mariposa is in Sutiava. Um, Vescano is in um, in Sutiava, and those both are in beautiful areas. You would go to it and be like, "What? People were worried about this? What are you talking about?" Right? Absolutely, you'd be fine. Uh, the airport is in Sutiava. Uh, there, you know, there's definitely you can get into areas that border on being shanty towns within Sutiava for sure. But you also they're few and far between. And just because it's a really poor area does not make it dangerous. Um, I don't recommend hanging out in those places. If nothing else, it feels awkward. Um, if you uh, watch my videos, though, I go to the absolute roughest parts of Sutiava, no question. Like, uh, I did a number of videos recently, and in the last two years, I have tons just to search on the title for Sutiava. Um, and I show the, the from the main plaza, walking all the streets, all the different stuff. And sometimes uh, you see it during the day. Of course, that's when my cameras look good. But I do go out at night and walk Sutiava all the time, um, like all the time. And uh, it's, it's not something I ever worry about. There's never a time that I'm worried about being out in Sutiava at night. And Sutiava is a main hub of activity late at night. So in the center of Sutiava, not on the main road, not, not on Ruben Dario, but off of that on 1st and 2nd Street, to the south uh, is where the, the church is and the main plaza. And I've got a Nicaragua 360 video on that. And I show it sometimes on this show. Uh, I did the interview with a uh, generic expat uh, there. And uh, <clears throat> that's the center of Sutiava. And that is often just loaded with people. The, there's so many people out on the street in Sutiava that it actually becomes safer, even in far-flung areas, than most of the city because it has even more people. 
just normal people, families, kids, you know, teenagers going on dates, out on the streets all the time. Two o'clock in the morning, there's going to be activity on the streets in Sutiava. So you don't get that in Labo Rio. And even though it's much closer to El Centro, often when I would walk Labo Rio at two o'clock in the morning, I'd be in the middle of dense uh, urban structure and yet be alone. And if someone was to come up to me on the street, I'd be like, I I I'm alone alone. Um, not that I was ever worried, but the location definitely added some potential for a criminal a criminal element to be able to get away with something. But in Sutiava, it is so unlikely that you're going to be out on the street and be alone alone um, unless you're in uh, a more wild area. Once you get to the outskirts, right, and you're walking through trees, well, okay, yeah, you're out on the main road, middle of nothing. But even coming uh, to 3 o'clock in the morning, you're generally going to see traffic out there. There's going to be cars going to and from the beach. There's going to be people out walking on the sidewalks, possibly in the darkness. You may just run into them. That's a real thing. You could slam into someone in the darkness on a sidewalk. Um, that's There's so many people and so little light out there. But no, Sutiava absolutely is, um, you know, it's not like... Where do we go to be safe for our vacation? Well, let's go hang out in the Barrio Sutiava. No, you wouldn't do that. Um, but if you were like, oh, we're going to Barrio Sutiava for, a, you know, a cultural event at, at midnight uh, and it's going to be on, you know, on, on 4th and in like this kind of rough neighborhood, you'd be like, well, that's weird, but I would not in any way be worried about it. Now, if the person is, you know, not someone you know at all, you'd be like, why Why do you want to take me there? But if this is like, you know someone and they want to show you like this part of the, like, I would have no worries whatsoever. It's a very friendly, very family oriented community. And it's where real people live, um, not uh, not cause for concern um, in any way. There are definitely rougher parts uh, in Guadalupe, like I said, in the south, um, sprinkled on the outskirts, but nothing near the center of the city. Uh, I think kind of east of downtown. So, so Sutiava is very far west of downtown. The area immediate east of uh, downtown, so past the Iglesia Calvario, um, that gets a little bit rougher where it's along the highway. The highway, like the, the Pan American Bypass, um, tends to, because of how industrial it is, that just the industrialization um, causes there to be fewer people out on the street and the people who are out there um, are less likely to be like families and stuff. Uh, so that area tends to get... Um, a little bit less secure simply because you have larger gaps where there's no lights, larger gaps without houses. Um, and the people who are out there are, you know, potentially sketchy people who are hanging out in industrial parking lots late at night um, and, and possibly in drunk groups or something like that. Uh, but even there, I mean, like, I really seriously, I could walk anywhere in the middle of the night and not be worried. Um, I can go, you know, you can see some of my videos where I go super far out. Um, all those places would be okay in the dark, except for the getting lost, falling down and hurting yourself, stuff like that. Uh, that could be a problem. But um, and, and if you watch my video from, I think, the last two days, uh, I did videos where I was out in like uh, Heroes and Martyrs of Sutiava, which is um, kind of a part of the barrio. You can see how beautiful that area is. And, and there's at no point um, where there's any problem greater than some trash or, or maybe traffic. It's, it's, it's super safe. And even when you're really far out in the country, I'm not worried at all, right? People are not lingering miles outside of town or whatever, hoping to catch that, that random tourist who once every five years wanders into that field. It's not like that, right? People are just going about their lives and, and honestly living in those lo locations um, and often are just excited that there's a stranger. You know, it's not like, oh, there's an opportunity to, to mug someone. It's, whoa, there's someone we don't know. Why are they here? This is a point of interest because this never happens, right? It's a very different thing. So yeah, Leon is safe and uh, don't be afraid of the barrios, but uh, you know, it, it be smart. Why would you go into the barrios um, and just hang out? Think about any US city, even though they're more dangerous, so this would be safer. Um, but if you went into a small uh, city like Utica, New York, or something, the 300,000 uh, person city and said, okay, I'm gonna pick the poorest possible neighborhoods and I'm just going to wander the streets late at night in the dark, you'd be like, yeah, chances are you'd be fine. But obviously you're increasing your risk quite a bit. Ask yourself, why are you doing that? I do it to film and I want to connect with communities and understand the city better. I, I do have reasons that I do it. Uh, and I know when I'm being risky or riskier. Um, but as a tourist doing that in the middle of the night, what is it that you're looking to do? Uh, but no, don't avoid the barrios. Um, Leon really is, really is pretty safe. And especially if you have like, oh, I'm going to go to a restaurant in the barrio. Yeah, for sure. Definitely don't worry about that. If you're going to something that's on a map or taking a taxi or 
whatever, yeah, absolutely fine. And if you're looking for a place to live, yeah, absolutely. Even with kids, Sutiava is completely acceptable. I don't know anyone who's come into Sutiava and said, oh, but it's dangerous or a place I don't want to go with kids or not a, not a place where I could raise a family or anything like that. It's really not the reaction that you get from Sutiava. You may get that this is very quiet, this is boring, it's very spacious, like there's, it's sprawling and that there's no very central downtown. There's a lot of reasons why you may not want to live in the barrio but safety is not one of them. It is a very family-friendly area. It is loaded with kids. It is loaded with families. It is a place where people really live and work and, and spend their lives. And uh, while it's not necessarily the place that is going to be right for you, it may not be what you're looking for. I would say the average expat is looking for something very different than Sutiava. Um, if it meets your needs or it's something you're interested in, certainly do not avoid it. I've been living in Sutiava now for a year and a half, and I absolutely love Sutiava. It is, uh, it's fantastic as a barrio. It's fantastic as a region. Um, and uh, I love that living in the city. When I tell people I live in Sutiava, instantly you got street cred, right? They're like, oh, you don't live in Leon, you live in Sutiava. And you get treated differently, you get seen differently. It's like, oh, you've you've taken an effort. You're not around other expats. You're not around foreigners. You are not isolating yourself. You're becoming part of the community for what it's worth. And uh, I can feel that. Um, and so I really appreciate being out here for a lot of reasons. Uh, I like the location. I like the cost. I like the open air. I like the, the variety that you get within Sutiava. We showed the map earlier. You can see it's, it's really large. So it encompasses a lot of different things. We have restaurants. We have banks. We have stores. We have things. And uh, and, and Dr. Coffee, where we go for coffee, that's here. Uh, so there's just so many things. And, and we really do utilize Sutiava more and more. And in, a, in an upcoming episode, I want to take you guys to the Sutiava Museum. But please go watch. Um, at very least, it's only a couple episodes old on Nicaragua 360, where we do just, it's just a few minutes, just put the camera in the middle of, of Plaza Sutiava, and we show the, the Iglesia Sutiava and the square, and you can see some of the old colonial buildings there. It's old cobblestone streets through Sutiava, and I think just looking at that, you'll be like, oh, what a pleasant, beautiful, old colonial, you know, area. What This is really cool. And um, I have a couple episodes where we walk downtown Sutiava from just I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, and then I have some from a couple of years ago where I did a lot of the main streets. I've covered Sutiava pretty extensively. And I think if you watch those episodes, you'll very quickly go, oh, this is a very nice area. <laughs> it is It is not at all what you're expecting and certainly not what people are portraying it as, which is also true in many of the things that they say in Managua. As soon as someone tells me, oh, there's this place in Managua I would never go, then I end up going there every time. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, maybe it's not fancy, but... Like it's it's fine, right? Um, it's never it's never the scary place that people uh, make it out to be. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining for an extra episode. But it's awesome that you picked out Sutiava, and I'm sitting in the middle of Sutiava recording this. So it couldn't be more apropos that uh, you just happen to pick the YouTuber who is in the exact barrio that you've heard bad things about. And if you watch my videos, every time I'm out walking, you're seeing Sutiava because I live in the middle of it. So everywhere I go, I'm walking through Sutiava. Like I did one the, la the, the last couple days where I went up to uh, Heroes and Martyrs of Sutiava. That's actually outside the barrio. It's, it's a separate area. It's a reparto. But I have to walk through unbelievable swaths of Sutiava to get out of Sutiava to get to that reparto. And uh, so every time you're seeing stuff, I'm driving through, walking through, shopping in, my bank is here, like everything I do is in Sutiava. So you see so much, all the like, if you see stuff on my channel and I'm not talking about where I am, chances are I'm in Sutiava. Um, the, the episode I did, I think for tomorrow, uh, this the one that comes out this afternoon, will be in Sutiava. Like it's just, it may be a different part of it that you don't identify Sutiava, but it's probably Sutiava. So thanks for the question. Perfect that you asked it here. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. This is an extra episode we did for the morning. I have my regular 4 p.m. is releasing this afternoon. That's already set up and ready to go. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, share on social media, tell all your friends, and I will see all of you in, in just a few hours.